Hi there, you're with Andrea Robson, the Kids Coach here in Marbella. It is my pleasure and privilege to have been invited by Ali Meehan to contribute some top tips and techniques to the Glo Global Entrepreneurs Week. If you had said to me 18 months ago, Andrea, you're going to set up your own business here in Marbella, I would have thought you were completely bonkers. I'm a teacher, I'm a former head teacher, and I have no experience of setting up and running my own business, and 18 months later, here I am. I think it's really important to pay it forward and to share some of the things I've learned. I've had a lot of people help and support me, and I've learned a huge amount. So that today is the focus of my video for the Global Entrepreneurs Week, is the tips and techniques to being a startup business. And actually, many of these things are true when you're fully established as well. Now, the last 18 months have been quite a roller coaster for me. I've set up a business, I've set up a blog, I'm got my own YouTube channel, or rather the cat has got his own YouTube channel. I've written a book, I've added to my qualifications, I'm collaborating with coaches here along the Costa. So I know some of the things that work, and by hook and by crook, I know some of the things that don't work. So here are my top tips for you in sharing some of the things I've learnt. I think the first thing to do is to celebrate and congratulate yourself that you're setting up a business. It's a massive step and sometimes we just kind of fall into it and we can find ourselves on a path that we are doing something amazing with our businesses. But it's a choice and a decision and one you should be really proud of. So that was my first tip. The second thing is I really struggled with this at the beginning and that was to know exactly what are you selling. If you can articulate what you are selling, if you can write it down, be very, very specific what you are selling, then that is step number one. Now, it might sound a bit silly. Well, I know what I'm selling, but I really didn't at the beginning. I had lots and lots of different ideas. I was training to be a life coach. I wanted to work with children. I wasn't quite sure how that was going to work. And it took me time to be very specific about what I wanted. So the first thing is be specific about what you are selling. The next thing is be very, very clear who are your target audience? Who are you selling to? How old are they? What gender are they? What do they like? What are their worries? What are their fears? What are their hopes? The more you know about the people that you need to be networking with and talking to and eventually selling to, the more successful you can pitch your product or services to those people. Write them down. So for me, primarily, but not exclusively, I'm dealing with women. They're my target audience. Maybe mums, grandparents, but not exclusively women. My target audience, because I'm a child coach, is people who have children or people who work in schools. I know that very, very clearly. You need to know that as well for your business in order to be successful. The clearer you can define what you're selling and who you're selling it to, the better success you're going to have with your business. Now, in what way does your product or service fill a gap in your target audience's lives? So for example, I coach children. I help them to develop life skills, with friendships, with bullying, social skills. Parents worry about their children. There are so many things they worry about. I tap into that worry and I help them to overcome those worries and those concerns. I know that they worry about their children's self-esteem, so I wrote a book for them, a short ebook on boosting self-esteem to help parents. That is really important. When you know what gap your product or service gives, the more successful your business is going to be. The next thing is, what is really unique? So in business, it's your unique selling point. What is really important, different, special, unique about what you are selling or the service you are providing? What sets you and your business aside from everybody else? What differences are there between you? There are lots of coaches out there. I specialize with children. I specialize 
in helping and supporting children and family units and I go into schools and I work, run international conferences to help teachers develop coaching skills for use in their classroom. That's my area of expertise. The more you're able to know where you are an expert, the more confident you will come across when you are networking and selling your product. Now, you've got your business, you know what you're selling, who you're selling to, what's special about your product and service and how your product and service helps someone else. Now it's time to really sit down and be very, very clear about your targets and your goals for your business. It is incredibly easy, I know. I have fallen for it so many times to write a massive to-do list that never gets any smaller. It can completely consume you and it can be very overwhelming. So set, sit down and write your targets for your business. They need to be very, very specific. One of my targets for this year is I wanted to improve, significantly increase my visibility here on the Costa so that, and that includes the cap, we'll talk about him in a minute. Um, I wanted people to know I'm here. So I have put in strategies to do interviews and guest blogs and all kinds of things on TV and radio to help me spread the word of my business. Be very clear about your goals from the outset because that's how you'll know you are succeeding. It's easy to charge on in and just bang, 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 and sooner or later you're lost. Set targets from day one, okay? I know, we're going to talk about you in a minute. So there's the cat. We will come to him in a minute. Now then, know what you want and know what your budget is. If you're going to set up a website, if you've got ideas about expenditure and budget and advertising and money, be very, very, very clear how much you are willing to spend and what you can get for what money and know that when you have spent X amount of money, what you are going to get from spending that amount of money. It's easy to start with something, not really be sure, and let it organically unfold and develop. It's a trap I fell into, and you can chase a lot of money that way. Be clear, know your limits, know your budgets, know your money, and stick to them. Ask around for people who can help you. You can't do it on your own. It's not possible. There are other women, uh, amazing women out there who are doing the same as you and who can support you. So that collaboration is really important. Ask around for people that can do X, Y, and Z for you. Find out how much they're charging. Be clear about agreements. Be very, very clear and verify that they know what they're doing and check in with them about what they're doing for you to help your business succeed. Now, the cat, we'll come to him in a moment. Know your competition, okay? Know who your competitors are. Just know who they are, know what they're offering, know what their social media is like, know what their website is like. Be informed. As you start to generate your targets, you can look at what they're doing, I, don't, I was told the best bit of advice I had was know what your competition are doing and do it better. So be informed. It's easy to get into this bubble look and go on, but know what they're up to and then do it better. There is a dichotomy between competition and collaboration. Collaboration in business is so important. I've worked with so many wonderful people and it has grown my business. Linking your social media together, using other people's ideas, promoting their products, they will then promote you back in turn. The idea is they've got a group of people that listen to them and pay attention to them. You've got your group of people. Get those people together, either on social media or on email marketing, but don't be an island. That's the worst mistake you can make. Be clear about who you're working with and collaborate together. Yes, you're going to have other people that are in competition, but they're offering something different to you, which is why you need to know what you're offering. Now, I'm going to talk about the cat now. 
I have used my cat. I've taken something that I know, something that I love, and I have taken his behaviour, and he's now crawling all over the furniture, which he's not allowed to do. I've taken his behaviour, and I've collaborated with an artist and a virtual assistant, and I have created vlogs for children. So I talk about the cat's behaviour, and then I relate that to children's behaviour, and then I get the children to problem solve their own more positive solutions to negative behaviour. These things are important. Using what you know, adding to your story, getting personable with your target audience is important. Children and adults up and down the costa know about Spooky My Cat. They know he's very naughty and I use that and it's a ploy. And it's a good one and it works because it gets people talking and that's what you want. Now, talking about talking, never say anything negative about your competition. Never slag them off. It's not becoming to you. It's not personable and it's not professional and it makes you look in the wrong. Don't do it. Never do it. Now, one of the things that is important is your relationship with the people that you're reaching out to. Whether that be face to face, whether that be through social media, whether that be on your blog. It's about your personable and your professional relationship. It's about your rapport and establishing that connection. That's why networking is so important. Getting out there and doing things face to face because people want to connect with a person. They want to know that they can trust you. They want to know that you're honest. They want to know that the person they're entrusting to give them a product or a service is someone who's reliable. Are, there, are you doing what you say you're doing? It's like, it does what it says on the tin. That's important. They need to know that. In order to make sure that you are really um, communicating these values, you have to know what your business values are. For me, it's all about trust. When parents, grandparents, aunties, when people send their children to school, they are trusting that teacher and that head teacher to look after every aspect of that child. And it's the same when I'm working with children and teenagers in the role that I have now. Trust, integrity, honesty, open communication, these are all very important. The more you can articulate what your values are, what your business stands for, what sets it apart from every other business, the more you can hook people in and get them talking to you. Once you've got them talking to you, you can really listen to what they're saying and how your product or service can help support them. It's not about selling directly, okay? You're not there trying to push your product and to push your service onto other people. I hate being sold to. I really do. Don't try to push a sale. You can be clear and professional and polite and you can go for it, but listen to what they're saying. What do you have that they need and follow that? Follow up with a date. Put a date in the diary. Make, if you say you're going to email them, email them. Always, always, always follow up. Follow up. Don't let those nagging doubts creep in. We'll talk about those in a minute. Follow up and keep it clear because you can do this. Now, it's important to have a support network. We are so lucky with Ali Meehan and Costa Women and I have met so many phenomenal women and I know that I have a secure, very supportive network there at Costa Women and it's a wonderful feeling because you're not an island and it's easy to feel that you are, but you're not. So reach out and start making those connections, okay? Now, get out there and network. Get up, do your hair, put some lipstick on and get out there, even if you're shy, even if you don't feel like it. When I started networking, I was not on my best form. I had been fired. I had been fired from my job. I was not in the mood to start talking to people about how great I was. I wasn't. And it takes time. But you get up and you do it anyway. You put a smile on 
because that is the most attractive thing about you and it's all you need to start is a smile. If you're nervous about networking, tell someone, it's my first time, I'm a bit nervous. Other people will help you. And that's the great thing about Costa Women is it's such a supportive, collaborative network. So reach out, network, get out there, talk to people. Now, when you're talking about your business to people, avoid jargon. It's such a turn off. Nobody really but you understands it and it will switch them off and they'll go and talk to somebody else. Find out what your jargony words are. I know lots of coaching jargon. I would never talk about them with people that I'm just chatting to about my job. Find other words. Make it a connection with them that you're taking away the jargon and you're using something more personable. Jargon is scary. It will turn them off. Don't do it. Now, lots of people, all of us, especially women, we can be very sensitive and we can worry that we're not good enough. We can worry that nobody's going to want our goods or our services. We can worry about what if we fail. We can worry about people judging us. You know what? They are. People are judging you. Do it anyway. Do it anyway. It's our decision whether we listen to a compliment or something derogatory. The compliment is the more powerful. Use those positives and build on those positives and don't let your assumptions about what people are thinking or maybe what they are thinking, don't let them drag you down. We all know how that works. There are people that are jealous, people that are insecure. Don't let them pull you down because they are not important. You are important. You can make this work and that's why your support network is so important. Go back to your values, go back to your support network because that is what will pull you through. One of the things that is really important to do is to ask for feedback, okay? You need feedback because of two things. Number one, because it will tell you all the things you are doing right. Once you can identify what you are doing right, you can keep repeating those things, okay? They are the things that establish you as credible and reputable. They are the things that establish you as an expert. Now, your feedback, you also need to find out what you're doing wrong. You need to find out what's not working for your clients. There's nothing worse than repeating something and you're turning people off and you don't know. That's a nightmare. You need to find out as quickly as possible if you're doing something, the last four of you, if you're doing something that's turning them off because then you can stop it. So your feedback is really important. Okay, now next one. When you are talking to people, do not put yourself down. Don't do that. You can be positive about yourself. You can be honest. Yeah, I mean, I'm new. I'm starting out. That's fine. But you're selling you and your reputation and your professionalism and your expertise. So those insecurities, don't let them come out when you're talking to other people. It's Don't do it. When you are establishing yourself as an expert, the biggest and quickest way to do that is via social media. Whatever your personal private thoughts are about social media, use it. That means using Facebook. That means using Twitter or Instagram or YouTube. All of my uh, spooky stories are on YouTube and I share them across Facebook and Twitter as well. It can be overwhelming. There's a lot to learn. But there are experts on the Costa. Fiona Catchpole is an expert on Facebook. She can help you. There are lots and lots of people. Oh, sorry. There are lots of people who can help you to get this set up and learn how to use it effectively because it is important. Okay. If you're looking into getting a blog, then what's important is your Facebook page name. I know your Facebook page name, your Twitter, your Instagram, and your, your domain, what your website is called, are all the same. So think really carefully about that and try and get them all to link up. It will make you easier to find. The other thing is, if you're setting up a website, it can be done cheaply. You do not need to rush in and spend a huge amount of money on this ever-evolving thing. 
know what it costs, be clear about what you need the website for, what is it serving, and then register your business with Google. Okay, Google my business, type it into Google, register your business. It means that if people are searching for your product or service, they will find you. And that is very important. There are websites over here, such as Marbella Family Fun. I'm going to do a plug for them. Advertise with them. Their input is huge. Do it. Get yourself out there. Network. Use your social media. Get a, a, a blog going. We'll talk about that in a minute. And advertise cheaply in the local area. Get out there and get your reputation known. Okay? Now, you should never be negative on social media. If you uh, need to vent, that's fine. But separate your business page from your profile page. Someone who is ranty or moany or negative or anything like that, that's going to impact your professional reputation. Don't do it. Separate your profile page and your, your business page and keep the two separate. Never the twain shall meet, but never be negative on social media. Now, you're going to get rejections and you're going to make mistakes. You cannot unlikely, highly unlikely, to set up a business and it's all going to be free flow and perfect. That's fine. A rejection is something you can learn from. Turn it into a positive experience. Follow up on people you meet, okay? Do do it. Remember, if somebody does say no to you, if they were going to go ahead and then suddenly they don't, it's not always about you. We take things really personally. It's our business. They're our babies. Of course, we want it to succeed. We want people to like what we're selling or, or the service we're providing. But it's not always about us. It's sometimes it really is about them. So remember to differentiate that. If you're blogging, do it. Don't be afraid. Just write it. Establish yourself as an expert. Okay? That's what I do with the spooky stories. And it's working. Okay. Do set up um, a database. When you go networking and people give you their cards, yes, of course, they're trying to sell you their product, but you can equally use that information. Set up a database, and once you're ready, and once you are happy to start moving forward, do use email marketing. It's very time-consuming, but it will work, and it establishes you as an expert, and it gets people knowing who you are, and what you're about. And the great thing about email marketing is one click and it's shared. It spreads your your words. Now, you need to give stuff away on email marketing. So I know that parents worry about self-esteem. I also know they worry about all the things they're doing wrong. So I wrote the anti-self-esteem book. On, on the website, I give away loads of free stuff because people like a bargain. It's important. You need to give away free stuff. You need to get people in and enjoying what you're doing and establishing yourself as an expert, okay? Pricing. Oh, I struggled so much with pricing. I didn't really want to ask money for what I, I was doing, which is not really great business acumen, is it? Put your hand on your heart and know how much you are worth. Know how much you are worth. And the second thing is, is go back to the profile of your target audience. What kind of money do they have to spend on your product or service? How much are your competition charging? But know your worth. That is so important. The other thing is never, ever, ever undercut yourself. If you're selling something for 20 euros and you say, oh, 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 all right, I'll give it to you for 12, I tell you what, Faster than you can say Jiminy Cricket, everybody now, so you've just, everyone now knows you've undercut yourself and you're selling something for 12 euros. You'll never get your pricing back up. Do not undercut yourself. Stick to your guns. You can offer uh, discounts. You can have, you know, Black, Black Friday, you know, these kind of things, but don't undercut yourself in price. Okay? Um, now then, prioritize your to do list. You must prioritize. Make sure that the things you are doing are linking back to that uh, plan that we talked about at the beginning of the session. Now, acknowledge and celebrate your successes, your, your first client, your first sell, your first blog, whatever it is, your first recommendation. 
acknowledge it and celebrate it. Don't ignore those things and think, yeah, 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 okay, now I've got 15 things on the to-do list. Acknowledge it, celebrate it, because you did that. That's something you did and that would not have happened without you. And that shows how much value your business has. So really make sure you acknowledge and celebrate that. And the last thing is enjoy it. Enjoy doing what you're doing because you're in this business because it's your passion and it's something that you are passionate about. So really enjoy it. Thanks so much for watching and thank you again to Ali, Nihan and the Costa Women for allowing me to contribute to this week's Global Entrepreneur Week. Take care and see you soon. Bye.